You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310, and we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at W. Choose from Mystery, Romance, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Borth. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Monday, 21st day of December, 2020. Thanks so much for joining us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we're just glad to have you right here, right now. If you can't see the screen, I have a go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. You'll be registered in about 30 seconds. That will give you one-click access to the show each and every day. When you join that way, you also have access to the chat box so that you can ask questions, and participate in the discussion. On the days you're out of the office, away from your desktop, point any internet-connected browser to cfrn.net slash live. There you'll find a live, real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds. You just won't have access to the chat box. Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather today in the harbor of your safety, we thank you for fellowship. We thank you for family. We ask that you strengthen us, restore us, and inspire us with your love. 
We ask that you would fill us with your peace so that as we journey onwards, we would pour out your love and grace to others. We ask that our souls would catch the wind of your spirit so that we would take your promises to all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, happy Monday. Those of you that were in the room this morning, you know Michael's sick, so I don't think he'll be joining us for this portion of today's programming. Uh, Valerie may come in and do a recap of what happened in the live training room. I'm not sure what her plans are, but if you are planning to do that, Valerie, just let me know. The numbers from around the world, the cash markets, the indices, as they're called, starting here in the U.S., the Dow down 124 points, NASDAQ down 110, S&P 500 down 38, and the Russell 2000 down 15. And the NASDAQ's down almost 1%, and the S&P is down just over 1%. In the commodity basket, crude oil down $2.19, it's almost 5%. Gold down $2.70, silver up $0.36, cents, trading $26.40 last. Huge run up on silver last night and then it sold right off. I'll show you the chart here in just a bit. In the Asian markets at the close, Nikkei down 48 points, Shanghai up 25, and the Hang Seng down 191. No movers, no shakers. And in the European markets at the close, FTSE down 112 points, DAX down 384, the CAC down 134. We've got movers and shakers. The FTSE is off almost 2%. The DAX down almost 3%. And the CAC down 2.5%. There's a new coronavirus variant in the UK. I'm sure you've probably heard about it. Uh, it's not more deadly, but it's 70% more communicable as I've been told. Also, London's uh, in a lockdown. You're not supposed to leave the city. And people are in danger of being arrested if they attempt to leave the city. It's considered a tier four area. I'm not sure what the definition of that really is, but now you know what I know. All right. Valerie, are you there? Are you planning to come in and do a recap of the of the room or not? If not, I'll just dive right into what I'm going to do. We're going to go over the concierge trade alerts, the Logic 247 alerts, as we do each and every day. As we've done since 2011. We've done a show every day since 2005. I think it was 2011 when we started adding the video element. If you go out to youtube.com slash CFRN, I think there's about 1,700 daily shows where we do exactly what we're doing here today. Except Michael's usually feeling good and he's usually here to do a recap of what happened in the live room. So I'm not hearing from Valerie, so I'll just proceed. Okay. Logic 247, our 24-7 e-mini alert service. We're now in our 125th week. We start Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's when the global markets open. And the alert channel stays open around the clock till Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern. This week, of course, we have Christmas on Friday, Christmas Eve on Thursday. I think the markets are open a half day Thursday. Could be wrong, but I think they are. I know Bert posted a calendar this morning in the discussion group. <coughs> so you can always go to the discussion group in Telegram and check the calendar. All right, so we've issued since last night at 6 p.m. Eastern, 
total of 18 alerts. One never triggered. Still waiting on the results of nine. That gave us eight actionable alerts, of which one was stopped out. So that's 13% of actionable alerts stopped out. Now, our risk profile, we do not want to risk more than $300 per contract, per trade, less when possible, based on market structure, using a very simple three-step methodology that I teach all of our traders. $300 less when possible, maximum risk. Okay. All right. Now, let's take a look at the actual alerts. Last week, which was week 124, we had a total of 66 alerts issued. 12 never triggered, one carried over to the new week. We had 53 actionable alerts. Eight of those were stopped out. That's 15% of actionable. What we average on any given week over the last 124 weeks is 20% of actionable alerts do get stopped out. Now, it's not possible to know the future. It is possible to know what the next high probability move is in the market, but even knowing what the next high probability move is, about 20% of the time, the market does something other than the next high probability thing. The carryover was crude. It was a long, and if you've looked at crude today, the bottom fell out I think crude is at the lowest price since early November. Okay, this is Mountain Standard Time, you see on the screen. I'm in Phoenix. So the Globex market opens at 6 p.m. Eastern. So 4.06 p.m. my time was when the first alert went out. And that alert was to be short the S&P at 3686 with an initial target, 36.84, and then potential support or the second target at 36.81, and then the trade two target, 36.74 slash 36.75. The Dow, short 3,020, Initial target, or I'm sorry, 30,000. Potential support or the second target, 29,950. And the weekly trading zone, 29,860. Now in the S&P, the swing low, when the recap was done, was 36.82 half. And then an exit signal appeared at 36.39 and a quarter. I'll show you what that looks like on the chart in just a moment. The trade to target on the Dow, 29.860. The exit signal appeared at 29.632. So we dropped an additional 200 points before the exit signal printed. And here we dropped about 30 points, 25, 30 points beyond the trade to target. Here's the Russell, short 1970, initial target 1968, potential support 1960, and then the weekly trading zone at 49 slash 50. So in this one, the market made $375 per contract available. I don't have all the numbers on all of them. I guess we'll get them updated later. Uh, another short on the S&P, 3692. Down to 3690, down to support at 3689. Swing low is 3689 and a quarter. Short on the Dow, uh, on the second trigger, it ran all the way, but we only recap the initial trigger because it just gets too complicated to try to track them all. And so on this one, stop out, 
the maximum risk three hundred dollars and then we had a short on crude oil 4820 down to 4810 down to 4785 down to the weekly zone at 4770 slash 75 at the time the recap was done price had already dropped to 4743 about another three hundred dollars as it sits, the market made $770 per contract available. And then we hedged those shorts with some longs. Those may come into play today. They haven't as of yet. Uh, this was a long on gold, just 90 bucks per contract. That's what the market made available. And then here's long on silver. And again, I don't have, I haven't done the computations on the total dollar amount, but we'll get those updated later today. And then uh, coming into today, I got a short on the S&P, short on the Dow, short on the Russell, short on the NQ, short on crude oil, and short on gold. Still waiting on those to trigger. So once again, Since last night at 6 p.m. Eastern, we've had 18 alerts. One never triggered. Nine waiting. Eight actionable. One stopped out. 13% of actionable alerts stopped out. Uh, Valerie, I don't know if you're there now. Okay. All right. I'm guessing Valerie's not coming. That's okay. We will just get through this recap. Lickety split. Now, what you just saw were the Logic 247 alerts. Those come out around the clock when opportunity presents. Okay? Live in real time. I build into the alerts enough time for you, wherever you are, in most cases, to get from whatever it is you're doing to your office, to your home, to your desk, to your platform. Time to put on your thinking cap, your trading cap, before the alert actually triggers, okay? But we have a second type of alert called the concierge trade alerts. Now, this doesn't come out around the clock. This comes out shortly after the Globex open. Last night, it got out at 6.29 p.m. Eastern, okay? This is a static report. It is forward-looking guidance for the entire session over a number of different markets, the S&P, the Dow, the Russell, crude, NQ, gold, and silver. Two numbers for each market. If price on the S&P, as an example, rallies up to 37.27, you can be long on the way up you can be long at 37.27, but above 37.27, you're only looking for long trades. On the short side, if price starts to drop towards 36.86, you either want to be short on the way down or short at 36.86, and only looking for short trades at 36.86 and below. Okay? Same for the Dow. Russell, crude, and Q, gold, and silver. Okay. So let's go to the daily chart of the S&P 500 evening futures. Last Friday. Last, yeah, Friday. Early in the day, we had a bearish engulfing candle. In other words, this whole wick right here. If you missed Friday's show, you can go back and take a look at the chart. Okay. The body of this candle was red. Just like, just like today's body is red. And it was a bearish engulfing candle or an outside day because Friday's high was higher than Thursday's high. And Friday's low was lower and Thursday's low. So this candle engulfs. 
but it had a red body. The whole wick here was red. Okay. I said on the show that it's possible buyers could come in, rally this thing back up. We could end the day on a positive note. Lo and behold, that's actually what happened. Price came down to blue and climbing to the step line, found support, caught a bounce. Let me refresh this chart. There we go. All right. So a bearish engulfing candle is one of the most bearish candlestick signals that you'll see. This one reversed itself. Now the high on Friday is 37.23. Today's high is 37.24. 37.23, 37.24. So do we have a higher high today? We do by one point. And obviously we have a much lower low. So is this a bearish and welcome candle? Second day in a row? It is. Now, price raced all the way down. Hang on for me one second, guys. 